We hereby announce that we have had to make the difficult decision to terminate our contract with the Niji Sanji EN Liver, quote unquote, Selen Tatsuki, effective immediately due to repeated breaches of contract and misleading statements on social platforms. We're talking about a management team that didn't do anything about internal bullying and harassment and let someone almost die because of their negligence. If you've been anywhere in the VTubing sphere for the past half a year or so, you've definitely seen the feud between Niji Sanji and Doki Bird, previously known as Selentatsuki. It took the community by storm, all hope for her return after her months-long hiatus crushed on seemingly a random day in February. Dragoons and non-fans alike tuned into the termination notice, confused and blindsided even more than the previous Zion Lanza and Asuma Yugo announcements. Surprisingly, why had she been terminated so suddenly wasn't the question in everyone's minds. Instead, it was a much more shocking question caused by one of the first of Doki Bird's statements after the announcement went live. As y'all know, um, when the announcement dropped, I was just as surprised as all of you. And, um, I only found out because a friend messaged me and I didn't even know what was in it. And I read it for, for the first time. I went public. Um... Why hadn't Niji Sanji told her about it either? This seemed to open the floodgates of scrutiny and accusation on Niji Sanji EN as a whole, from known management issues to rekindling research on previously dubious situations. Something was going on inside the branch and people wanted answers. But if you're watching this video, you probably already know this. You might even be a contributing factor in speculation and boycotting their public appearances and brand deals. But we're not here to recap everything that went down with Niji. In fact, the large of this video isn't even about Niji. What I really want to talk about is everything that happened post Niji dumpster fire. There's been a notable and honestly very concerning shift in the dynamic of VTubers, agencies, and fans alike. One that I can only describe as self-destructive. I'll start with the first on the list of concerns, VTubers. And I'm talking mainly about the indie sphere like you and I, rather than the established Corpo VTubers out there. As far as I'm aware, Corpo VTubers under Hololive, Vishojo, and most of Niji Sanji have been minding their own business and staying in their lanes. So I don't have much to critique on an individual level. If anything, good on them for moving on and creating a space for their fans that uplifts instead of stews in the negativity. My actual critique is on the indies who saw the drama go down and, you know, instead of learning a lesson or two on how to manage their brands, decided that it was time to rake in that engagement, baby! A particular phenomenon that I've noticed on the YouTube side of things is that many channels have started shifting into the drama or news side of content. And I think a large reason for this is the success of content creators who posted videos about the Niji dumpster fire as it was developing. I mean, some of these videos got hundreds of thousands of views within a few days, regardless of the channel size. Drama coverage is a known goldmine, and this happened to be the biggest story in the VTubing sphere for the whole year. But it's also well known that basing your brand on being a niche version of drama alert is just as destructive in the long term as it is beneficial in the short term. Right now, I think a lot of these creators who hopped onto drama reporting within the last six months are in the fucking around phase. The feel-good phase of harvesting all the gold and have yet to fully acknowledge the finding out phase that is inevitable. This crash is usually the creator getting burnt out and becoming inescapably linked to drama even after a brand change, but that's only half of the whole consequence. What's left is the community of negativity they fostered, who got used to saying their mind on everything happening in the space that now need a new outlet. It becomes a vicious cycle that ropes innocent people into the mix and leaves everybody worse off. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me backtrack and explain what I mean. VTuber news has long been dominated by three individuals. False ID, Rev Says Death, and Kilmaru all of which have a very divisive split between their fan bases versus the people not so keen towards them. And for good reason. When big stories aren't ongoing, a lot of their reporting turns to lesser known Twitter spats that generally have no business being spread outside of the original platform. 
That and the choice to highlight rats from 4chan or Reddit in some cases made a lot of people lose trust in their journalistic integrity. This caused the initial rift between their viewers and haters long before the Niji implosion, but it's useful context for understanding their role in today's climate. To most viewers, drama content is like reading the morning paper before going to work, something you can look on from the sidelines and laugh at. No one really took them as a fully credible source, and their reach mainly stayed within those interested in VTubers and their culture, so while not entirely harmless, it was pretty self-regulated within the community. That is, until Niji Sanji copyright struck False ID and Kumaro's channel in early 2023, also in February, which makes for a weird coincidence. But upon this happening, something very clearly shifted in the way they reported on Niji Sanji related news. Most, if not all, stories thereafter held a negative bias that continuously pushed forward the idea that Niji was a black company and hired equally bad actors. This caused a trend of disliking and overanalyzing everything Niji and their talents did over the course of the year, not only in their viewership, but in the wider community as a consequence. So, when the Doki Bird situation hit the fan, their bias against Niji sorta of became vindicated, and suddenly their news coverage became the most trusted source to get information from, to hell with all the very real critiques that people held against them in the past. And now, specifically within the past six months or so, a bunch of new drama channels have started to really make waves by farming this negativity based on the fact that hating Niji became mainstream. So the channels that spoke about these happenings were being pushed to the forefront on people's YouTube homepages more than ever. This is where the idea of the goldmine kicks in, as any video with Niji Sanji or a well-known agency in the title is bound to get more clicks and watch time than anything else. Consequently, the desire to hear the rest of the VTuber industry's downfall also rose. So, after these creators found their footing by covering the Corpo stuff, when no other updates could be given on those fronts, they then started to farm hate trains on things they saw go down on indie VTuber Twitter, regardless if the accusations were legitimized or still one-sided he said she said Google Docs. Journalistic integrity is out the window, and it's most likely that these creators do not realize what they're portraying VTubers as to the wider YouTube audience. Like, to break it down for you, there are three main types of viewers of these channels. Corporal fans, indie VTubers and their fans, and the rest of the internet. Corporal fans and indie VTubers tend to not mix, even though they are part of the same niche fandom. It's more like indie VTubers are fans of corpos and also mingle in the indie space, Meanwhile, non-VTubers who are Corpo fans tend to completely ignore what goes on on the indie side. Imagine it like a Venn diagram, with only a small percentage of fans interacting with the whole sphere. And of course, the normies who never stick their nose into the VTubing side at all are completely clueless of what goes on in here. So, when faced with tons of drama channels calling out bad actors in the indie space, it leads to these viewers taking away different understandings of the reality of things. For an indie VTuber fan, it's easy to brush these cases off as outliers, but for Corpo fans, it gives them all the more reason to stick to their preconception of the bad indie without giving the majority of indies who don't make the news the time of day. And for normies who maybe got hooked on the Niji fiasco and decided to look more into VTuber related issues, the takeaway is all but negative. I do want to give specific examples of the situation going on but I don't want to single out any one creator, as they're all just products of the time we're in, but I do have critiques on the way some choose to ignore what they're contributing to. So going into this next section, I am going to name drop, but please do not send any hate towards these people. Let this be a constructive conversation. For starters, let's look at this channel, Sephira Denoma, who decided to cover the Niji meltdown when it was hot, which was according to her, not her usual content on YouTube. Okay, so I've never made any videos like this and I'm going to be aiming to do this in like one night. So excuse any scuff, but basically. But it did numbers. Ever since then, she began posting more and more drama related videos and quickly gained views and subs. This is a pretty dramatic growth timeline. Just looking at her stats on Social Blade proved that what she was putting out was sticking. VTuber Sex Pest, VTuber Copycat, VTuber Trace Design, all topics that are heavily based on hating a clear villain in a sort of black and white situation. One that doesn't take a lot of brain power to process for the viewer. 
As I said before, a lot of these stories are common Twitter spats in the space that most of us have grown tired of seeing on our timelines. But the YouTube bubble isn't used to seeing these callout cases every day, so what are generally lackluster stories become big news that furthers the negative perception of smaller VTubers. It's a win-win situation for drama channels and the audience it caters to, but in the grander scheme of things, mainly the rest of the VTubing space, it's a lose-lose situation due to the reasons I've mentioned before. And Safira herself even acknowledges that the type of people who are attracted to her YouTube content aren't really there to see her as a creator, but the story of the day. What I'm not particularly enthused by is the way she wants to extract herself from the drama scene in regards to her brand and community while still using said drama to fuel her growth. You can't have your cake and eat it too. There's consequences, and I think this is the perfect example of the finding out phase. And here's a similar case, Kat Liente, who also discovered that talking about VTuber controversies gains a lot of traction. Just like Safira, her channel had a meteoric rise in subs and views once she started posting more drama-related videos centered around VTubing. What's important to note here though is that Kat Liente isn't a VTuber and has shown her lack of understanding of the VTuber circle more than once. This is incredibly damaging, and you know, if I can be candid here, not welcome by the majority of VTubers. This aggressive negative coverage of VTubers has, of course, born a community of people who take any chance they get to hate on indies. This is in no way constructive, or useful, or educational. It's not even recording history for years down the line to look back on. It's straight up inciting harassment for the sake of views. A lot of people would describe her as a tourist, as in someone who is not a VTuber fan, doesn't know about the culture and rules we sort of abide by, and therefore comes in with the attention to profit off of the community without any care for the repercussions of their actions. All she has done outwardly on her channel is show her lack of respect for VTubers based on her understanding of the space, which also comes from other drama outlets. And there are other such channels with varying forms of news content going over the daily mishaps, some more informed than others, but one thing that they all have in common is the spreading of distasteful happenings in our niche community to the wider audience, whether they intend of it or not. Even mainstream channels like Moist Critical and Mudahar talked about the Doki Bird situation and subsequently VTubers. If you check the comment sections of those videos, you'll see many normies making assumptions about VTubers as a whole that are wildly inaccurate. But these opinions are fueled by the negativity easily available to them. Negativity that is being spread by our own goddamn people! Personally, it's made the space unbearable to be in recently. I genuinely don't like logging into my VTuber Twitter account because everyone I follow quote retweets the new scandal of the day because we've been so conditioned to comment on everything. It's also simply a matter of course for that very same scandal to appear on my YouTube homepage within hours. So it's truly become inescapable. It's entirely unhealthy and I think many of us are tired of it, seeing as how fellow creators have also released their version of this video topic in recent months. The negativity bandwagon has taken a toll on all of us, and to me, I really do think it worsened to where we are now from the moment Selene was terminated. Congratulations on making it this far into the video. Unfortunately, there's still a little more we have to go over. While VTubers themselves caused a big impact on the current situation, we also have to factor in the much larger entities that essentially create the meta of how we all operate. VTuber agencies. How do I say this? VTuber agencies were... never good in the first place? <laughs> what started as a niche idol sphere that Japan was already familiar with became widespread and altered to fit the Western audience. However, the contract and work environment hardly changed during this period, and to what I can only label as incompetent. When the Niji Sanji EN contract was leaked and malpractice became the biggest talking point in the community, Smaller Western corporations attempted to turn the tides in their favor. This way, they could somehow prove to fans that jump ship that they were a much better investment of time and support. And the way that they did this? Transparency. This word has been hot on the tongues of any agency critic since the dawn of VTubers. The people want transparency. 
as in, they want to see the reason for terminations, or suspensions, or talent wages, or revenue splits, or stockholder information, and so on. To add historical context, the biggest example of this came in Yugo Asuma's termination notice, as most people weren't satisfied with the vague reasons provided. What Niji Ien decided to do then, for Zion's later termination notice, was drop a laundry list of every punishable thing the talent did to be terminated. Now this caused a divide in spectators. Some saw it as an extremely unprofessional way for an agency to allegedly defame their talent, while others praised the dedication to transparency this time around. But what that really did was form a horrible precedent for all future termination notices in the VTubing space. When Idol Corp terminated Kyoresu, who went by Riro Ron, they mimicked Zion's level of transparency and completely humiliated her. I mean, the things she was accused of with no proof shown to the viewer was borderline defamatory, and intentionally or not, attempted to make her return to the indie sphere as controversial as possible. This was not the transparency we had hoped for. This became weaponized transparency. And now we have an even bigger problem post Niji Dumpster Fire. Startup agencies misusing transparency to send a fabricated image of their work ethic to the masses. The most appalling case in recent times was a startup known as VC. VC was a small agency in the English-speaking market who touted themselves on Twitter to be a promising new alternative for corporal VTuber fans. Many fans lost their allegiance to Niji Sanji and now wanted to support clean agencies only. The level of transparency VC had shown didn't go overboard and instead gave plenty of reason to invest support with them and their growth. But then the truth came out. A Google Doc from an ex-talent that spoke on the lack of professional conduct by the CEO. The fact that the company hired multiple minors despite knowing the implications of doing so. And of course, the fact that the company wasn't a registered entity in the first place. So now, where does that leave us? A fake agency that spent months growing their brand reputation off of being a good, transparent company, now defunct and abandoned. A fake CEO that may possibly have hundreds of indie VTuber docs information from the audition process in his computer. It's not hard to see how incredibly dangerous that is, and unfortunately, how easy it is to replicate. BC was not a one-off story. There's a few Twitter accounts dedicated to retweeting agency auditions, both big and small, and every single one I looked at appears to promise the same things VC did with no actual proof of legitimacy. Transparency in the VTubing community has become synonymous with its exact opposite meaning, obscurity. As I was working on this video script, Idol Corp once again caught negative headlines as freelance mixers and artists they hired came public with Google Docs on very glaring issues. Holy shit, this video has been in the works for so long that this is not even new information anymore. Oh my god. Payments being delayed for over five months being a major red flag in the way the agency runs. Only after these allegations were posted on Twitter did Idol Corp respond, which again put their image of the good, transparent corporation they promoted as up to the test. They promised transparency gave many VTubers and creators a false image of being one of the good ones, only to fall flat. Now that they've been bought out by Brave Group, one can only hope this takes them in a better direction. However, trust in the agency sphere is all but lost. I see people auditioning for small agencies without doing any research, and I can only sigh and shake my head. Transparency can't be believed especially not from agencies claiming to be the most upfront about insider information post Niji's situation. Frankly, you could not pay me to join an agency these days. The VTubing industry was never a perfect and drama-free place, let's be real. But I really do think internet toxicity has reached its peak in our niche this year with everything going on. And it's horrible, it sucks. So what are your thoughts? Has your experience been any worse this year than in the past? Or are we seeing the downfall of VTuber agency culture as we know it? There's much more to be said about other websites that incite hate, like Reddit, 4chan, and doc sites. But if I went into it in this video, it'd likely extend way over an hour. I will say that a key figure in this implosion of VTuber agency credibility 
stems from r slash kurosanji, as the rats from there filter out onto the Twitter timeline and YouTube space used as informed sources. If you want to see more of that rabbit hole, I suggest watching Kenny's recent video on it because he does a good job highlighting its consequences. But that's all I have time for in this video. If you can take anything away from this, just focus on spreading the good parts of VTubing. Not every negative interaction needs to be sensationalized across platforms and milked for engagement. That's really, <laughs> that's really all I have to say.